Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm having a coffee break to discuss the paper Leverage in Bogota, Sustainable Development, Global Philanthropy and the Rise of Urban Solutionism. This paper was written by Sergio Montero. He is an Associate Professor of Urban and Regional Development at the Universidad de los Andes in Bogota, Colombia. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with cutting-edge insights on regional development and innovation. We ask researchers directly and in a personal manner about their work. We make scientific knowledge accessible to all. Sergio, thank you for accepting an invitation to have a coffee break with me. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm having today, as usual, Colombian black coffee. Which coffee are you having? I'm having Colombian coffee as well, of course. Uh, it's a coffee from Nariño region in Colombia. That's great to know, I love that coffee too. Sergio, your paper is about how knowledge rises uh, between cities and uh, in the particular case of Bogota. Could you please tell me what the paper was about? Yes, this is a paper about how uh, in the global development world uh, cities are becoming more and more important and uh, the circulation of policy knowledge between cities and particularly between south-south cities is becoming more important. And so uh, that could be like a great news for cities, but it also has some problems. And what I do in this article is I try to understand why we have reached this paradigm of uh, looking at cities as potential solutions to development, uh, but also what are the problems with that. And um, if I understand correctly, the key notion of your paper is urban solutionism. Could you please give us a definition of it? Yes, so uh, cities, in particular in, in, in issues of sustainability and climate change, uh, cities have been perceived as problems, problems to sustainability, uh, the causes of, of climate change. And what we're seeing in recent years is a, a, a sort of like a change in paradigm in which we're looking at cities as potential solutions to these kind of problems. So, uh, you know, if cities do more sustainability policies in terms of transport, in terms of public space, in terms of housing, so Urban planning has become uh, a potential solution for global development problems, but uh, this has also become, uh, this has also made development organizations and philanthropic organizations very optimistic about the possibilities of cities. And so that's what I call uh, urban solutionism, the idea that uh, just by exchanging best practices and policy knowledge, uh, we can solve global development problems. This is, uh, I think, is a great beginning, but we can also uh, we should be a little bit cautious about uh, what this means. And based on these notions, which ones will you say are the key findings of your paper? The key findings of this paper, I would say, is that we've seen an increase in uh, cities uh, or, or policy knowledge from cities of the south uh, circulating around the globe. So normally or traditionally, um, the circulation of policy knowledge was north to south, right? So uh, urban planning policies, the big cities of, uh, of Europe and North America were the models that cities in Asia, Africa and Latin America were following. What we've seen in recent decades is the emergence of cities of the south as alternative models for urban planning. That is a very interesting uh, development itself. But what I've seen in this paper, doing research for this paper, is that it, this south-south uh, traffic of policy knowledge is often orchestrated by institutions or organizations based in the north, uh, particularly development organizations, so particularly uh, you know, the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Asian Development Bank, but also philanthropy. Philanthropy has become a very important actor in producing and circulating urban policy knowledge. So Bloomberg Philanthropies in particular, but also Hewlett Foundation. Uh, many foundations are now interested in cities uh, or influencing what cities do in order to solve global development problems. That's uh, very interesting to know. Thank you for clarifying it. And uh, what was your main motivation or your personal driver to write this paper? I was interested in this research because uh, this was part of a bigger project that was trying to understand how and why Bogota 
has become a model for transport planning for many cities. There are, there are about 500 cities around the world that have replicated Bogota's bus rapid transit system, Transmilenio, and also its bicycle policies. So when I, so I was very interested in trying to understand how did this happen? How is it possible that now we have, I don't know, Cape Town or Bangkok or San Francisco in the US uh, referencing Bogota to do changes in their um, urban transport system. So what does it mean, this sort of like reversed of the way in which uh, urban policy knowledge travel from north to south to south-south and even south-north? So what I real after doing research about this topic, what I quickly realized is that the international development apparatus was behind the production and circulation of Bogota as a model. And so that also means that the circulation of Bogota or the, as a model is also trying to fulfill a bigger sort of like paradigm shift in the way that development, the international development uh, or system works. And so I was very interested in, uh, or that's sort of my, my motivation of how I arrived to the topic. Thank you for sharing, that's very interesting to know. And finally, I want to know which ones will you say are the key policy implications of your research? I think that the key policy implications of this paper is that uh, we have now a lot of knowledge about best practices, so a lot of knowledge about what other cities are doing. So now, every time we want to do something now, mayors and planners, the first thing they do when they come to office is that, okay, we need to solve this, what are other cities doing about this? And this is great, but at the same time, it's dangerous that we end up just replicating what other cities do, because what worked in other city might not work in your city. Even if you are, you know, a Latin American city, or even, you know, that you, each city has its problems, and we need to understand the problems. We need to ask questions about why is this not working, why transport is not working, why housing is not working in our city. And probably there are some common reasons that many cities share, but there's also probably very local uh, reasons why this is happening. So what I would say is that, yes, having best practices is great, but we need to be cautious and we need to be, uh, we need to understand the question, the, what the problem is before giving the solution. That's why the emphasis of, on this paper on, the, on a critique of this idea of urban solutionism. It's good to have solutions, but we cannot uh, sort of like become a solutionist, you know, just taking one solution from one city and apply it. We need to understand the problem in our city, we need to talk to the civil society and people in our city to understand what the problem is and what the implications are. And I think that is one of the main implications of, of the paper for policy. Sergio, those were all my questions. Thank you very much for having the time to chat with me. It was a pleasure for me to have you here in Coffee Break and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more details about this academic publication, you can find the link here below. See you next time. Bye-bye.